This is the Project Management Podcast. We bring project management topics to beginners and experts. Find us on the web at www.thepmpodcast.com or send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. Hello and welcome to episode number 121. I am Cornelius Fichtner. This is the Project Management Podcast for the 12th of June 2009. Nice to have you with us. The number of social media websites out there is sheer overwhelming. There is Twitter, Facebook, FriendFeed, MySpace, Skype, Google Chat, Plurk, Bebo, Xing, High Five, Orkut, Pounce, and LinkedIn. And these are just the more popular ones. But why should you as a project manager care about social media? Well, Boss the Bar thinks you should. Boss argues that social media will help you to grow personally, your visibility within the worldwide project management community will grow. And he also argues that social media helps your worldwide virtual project team to grow together faster and deliver better projects. We'll get to the interview with Boss in just a moment, but first we have just one quick announcement. And this quick announcement will probably make Michael Emmons and Lee Bennett very happy. Michael is one of our premium podcast subscribers and Lee is one of our free podcast listeners. And both of them have won one of the Risk Board games from successful projects that Kai Weiss introduced to us about two weeks ago. So, congratulations to Michael Emmons and Lee Bennett for winning this Risk board game from SuccessfulProjects.com. But now let's move on to our main interview, Social Media and Project Management with Bas de Bar. Bas discusses project management in a global, mobile, virtual and multicultural world through his popular blog and video podcast, The Project Shrink. With over a decade spent in the trenches as software project manager within the publishing, financial and public sector running multinational teams, he has a lot to talk about. Bass holds a master's degree in business information and lives with his wife in the Netherlands. He is the author of the book Surprise, Now You're a Software Project Manager. And like me, he is a member of the PMI's New Media Council. Enjoy the interview. The Project Management Podcasts Feature Interview Today with Bas de Bar, author of Surprise, now you're a software project manager. Hello, Boss, and welcome to the program. Hello, Cornelius. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Glad to have you back. What? It's been about two years, three years? Three years. September 2006, I remember. <laughs> Wow. All right. We are going to be talking about social media and project management. And to make this a little bit more live and interactive, I am currently logged on to my Twitter account here. And I have a message ready, a tweet ready. And I'm going to say that I'm interviewing you at Project Shrink on social media and project management. And I'm asking people to tweet me their questions for you so that I can ask you right here on the program. And this is going to go out to my 1,329 followers right now. So let's see what questions they will ask you during the next 30 minutes or so as we're doing this interview. So let's get this started. You recently gave a presentation and it was titled Everything a Project Manager Should Know About Social Media. And you gave this to the audience at the uh, PMI Global Congress, uh, EMEA, I believe that was in Amsterdam, right? Absolutely. Next door almost. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Right in front of your, your, front of your house, really. <laughs> so let's begin with this question here. Why should a project manager even care about social media? I mean, after all, as a project manager, you have an assigned project team and they don't really need to reach out to the world like I just did and, and using Twitter or Facebook or Dig. So why should we care? You should care because you're living in a virtual, flat and crowded world. It's a very beautiful sentence, but, you know, um, 
I like it very much. I, I, in, I uh, invented it myself, of, of course, uh, heavily in, in, uh, influenced by a, a certain book. But, you know, uh, we're, the projects we are doing are more and more are increasing uh, uh, virtual projects, so where uh, where virtual teams are uh, working together, and as I'm, everybody almost knows, that puts a, uh, an extra handicap or an extra challenge, if you want, on uh, the communication. The flat part is the is, is globalization, so it's not only that you are working with people um, that you have to communicate through a, a, a small line. But the people that uh, you are communicating with are almost uh, are also from a different uh, culture and have a complete different um, frame of reference, so a mindset uh, d- different than uh, than yours. And the crowded part ha- uh, talks about the fact that uh, because of the globalization, the t- choices of who to pick. Are increasing. So, if you are having a team, who are you going to pick? And in reverse, uh, why are people going to pick you as a project manager? So, all these things, the virtual, flat, and crowded world, make it so that the project manager should care about social media because social media is about communicating in this world I just described. You have to get the skills to express yourself online, to be able to discuss with uh, different cultures and different languages through a digital media. It's a it's a difficult thing to do, so you have to develop your skill set. So that's why project managers should care. Okay, we got a first question from Twitter coming in here. That was quick. Um, it's from uh, the user COB Pez, Cobb Pez, and he says, ask boss about social project place. Do you know anything about social project place, boss? Um, y- yes, Um it's. Um, I'm surprised that <laughs> that this one pops up, but that's that's what you get eh, if you ask for live. <laughs> uh, if you are li- asking live questions, now there's a um, a great uh, uh, project collaboration tool which is called Project Place, um, and they are experimenting and are developing and researching um, the use of uh, or the emphasis on social media in their uh, offering. So, for example, they're uh, using the information provided uh, by Twitter and Facebook and and, uh, LinkedIn, for example. They want to bring that into uh, the system to, uh, well, provide more social background to the uh, team members that are working in it. So, uh, it's a great and nice experiment they're doing. And uh, so, once in a while, I'm... uh, keeping tabs on the developments that are uh, out there. All right. He probably works for the company and just wanted us to to advertise for free for him. (laughs) Well, he succeeded in that one. (laughs) (laughs) So where exactly then do you see the value of social media for an organization, for a company as a whole, and maybe also for projects specifically? Um, For companies, it's not per se that the social media itself, the tool itself that... uh, um, provide the, the benefits it's more um, the secondary so what 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 social media enables and to come back that's the the virtual flat and crowded world so with virtual you're um, reducing on travel expenses and uh, uh, cost of buildings um, with globalization you are uh, being able to leverage your workforce more efficiently and of course um, uh, cost, labor costs uh, are also a part of that one. So it's it's more uh, the fact that um, um, social media enables you to make virtual flat and crowded work. Uh, that uh, where the benefits are for uh, the corporations. All right, G- give us a definition. Maybe what type of social media are we talking about here? We're just talking about Twitter and Facebook, or what else? Basically, I'm I, I'm. Talking about everything with the reply button, but that's uh, that's a little too broad. that's a little too broad. But um, um, if you are looking for, uh, if I'm talking about social media, I'm generally talking about blogs, wikis, uh, social networks like Facebook and LinkedIn, um, micro blogging tools like Twitter, um, and, and 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 this uh, uh, this kind of stuff. 
what what basically makes this all social media is the fact that um, these are systems that enable uh, a conversation. If you look up uh, social media uh, on the internet, you always always pops up about it's a conversation, it's a conversation. Well, that is great because we are trying to solve a communication problem. So it's, uh, it's nice that it, uh, it's, it's about a conversation. So the, um, these systems allow you to uh, um, provide, bring messages from one person to another. What makes social media especially uh, uh, new, makes them actually social, is the fact that they bring uh, the emphasis on the people that are having this discussion. So, for example, that's why you see big pictures of people behind their messages. That's why you see profile pages um, next to uh, um, the discussions people are having. That's why you have uh, uh, big about me uh, buttons on blocks, for example. So they provide background and they provide an image of the people having this conversation. And that's an essential part of social media. Yeah, when you said wiki, I instantly decided, you know what, let's see what Wikipedia has to say about this. And, and you're right, they do talk about conversation. They say it's a fusion of sociology and technology, transforming monologues, where one person talks to many people, into dialogues, where many talk to many. And it is the democratization of information, transforming people from content readers into publishers. Nice way of pushing uh, of putting it here. I like uh, especially the another one from Kimberly Weaveling I had in the, the preparation of this one, which is something that wasn't supposed to be valuable for business and now is. Uh, and <laughs> That's a cool <laughs> definition. <laughs> so I'll take that one sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> All right, we got another question from the Twitterverse here. This one is from uh, Coach M. That's Margaret Maloney, uh, one of our regular interview guests here on the program. So, Margaret Maloney asks you, boss, my question about PM and social media. What is the best use of social media for project managers and how can a PM avoid wasting time? First, there there, there are three levels, actually, to... Uh of, uh, to which a project manager can use social media. First one is the personal one, for personal development. Second is professional, so to uh, present yourself uh, professional and to also acquire knowledge about your profession. And the third one is the project, which of course is uh, one of the most uh, interesting ones. But um, if I just stick for for uh, the, the personal one and uh, uh, the project one, for a project manager, it's essential to use social media to develop your skills, to develop the skills uh, you need to converse uh, in a digital world with uh, um, people from all over the world on all kinds of subjects and being able to uh, handle feedback, handle discussions. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's not that difficult, but it's something that requires uh, a lot of practice. So that's what, what's in it for uh, the project manager. To avoid wasting your time, uh, there, you cannot do everything. There are, there are too many tools uh, for, uh, to, to, to try them all, and you, and you shoot them. Just pick from uh, every category. I would, I would almost say pick the, uh, the leader. So um, pick LinkedIn, pick Twitter, uh, Use a blog if you uh, if you want, and uh, be active on, on those one. And um, so just to avo- avoid uh, uh, wasting your time, but you don't don't see it as wasting your time. See it as uh, uh, developing uh, as as personal development. You're working for yourself uh, there. And last but not least, it's uh, the more you do it, the easier it gets. I think you should uh, agree on that one. Um, if you, uh, the first time on Twitter, you're like, oh, how does this work? And now you go on it and it's, it's almost natural. So it's, uh, um, uh, it doesn't, uh, it, it, the time you, it, it costs to use it also reduces in, uh, very fast. I can also speak to the how can you avoid wasting time. When I originally started using Twitter, you know, yes, uh, you know, how do I use this? And, and then suddenly you get into it, right? And you, you start spending uh, a, a sizable number of, 
of, of hours on there just reading what other people are doing. And, and so, yes, you're wasting time a little bit there. But then after a while, you know, this, this hotness, this hot new thing becomes normal and you are using it, you know, uh, judiciously and, and you're not wasting time anymore because you have some real work to do there. So I would say, yes, in the beginning, you probably start wasting a bit of time and, and later on it becomes it becomes just normal. And would you call it wasting your time if you, you know, get up and walk over to the coffee ma- machine and Joe is over there and you spend five minutes with Joe yeah. talking to Joe about his weekend? No, you wouldn't call that wasting your time. You would call that social interaction. But because you're now doing it on Twitter, well, it's wasting your time, isn't it? No. Well, it's, it's, actually, it's actually the same thing as uh, the, the cable show I had the first time. The first time I had cable, I have 300 new channels and I was oh watching God. them all. I'm watching them all, you know. I'm paying for it. I should yeah. be watching them all. Now I'm just watching two channels and everything is fine. Mm. Exactly. So I spoke about, you know, the the water cooler, the turning social media into a, a virtual water cooler. Is that the only problem we're trying to solve here with social media on our projects? Getting people together to communicate and connect? Why not just stick with email? Why, why isn't email enough? There, there, there are two points to be made uh, uh, in favor of social media for this one. First of all is um, if you take normal communication, so there's a, a, a sender and a receiver, and somebody is telling another person a certain message, um, if the receiver of this message provides feedback to the other one about what he got and how he understood it and asks questions, and if it goes back and forth like that, um, it improves dramatically the quality of uh, the communication. So, first of all, um, having increased feedback um, reduces the risks of um, miscommunication, if you want. So, that's why I said first about everything that has a reply button in social media. A very, uh, uh, a very essential part of the social media is that it provides feedback. You can have a blog post, people can comment on it, and you have a complete discussion about it. And at the end of the discussion, the people that are in this conversation uh, have a, a better and more clearer uh, view of what everybody means. The second one is how how many iterations you are doing and how good you are, are in, in providing feedback and back and forth, you will never get the whole picture. There will be always parts, uh, blanks that you fill in, in, in inside your, your head. And for this uh, purpose, you are using the image that you have of somebody. So, for example, I uh, was at the PMI convention and everybody is there wa- wearing PMPs. So I know that those people know their Gantt charts from their risk log and that they uh, are very um, good at planning and that they, you know, you have, if you see, see such a person, you think they're organized. Even if I don't know them, I'm assuming that. And um, th- that goes further and further and further, of course. But uh, this mechanism of, of filling in the blanks, so uh, knowing some some background about a person, um that is also very important uh, in, 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 in communication. And to come to, to the social media, because it brings the person more uh, dominantly into this conversation, so you have uh, uh, labels of uh, uh, the groups they're associated with, you have profile pages, you have uh, uh, pictures if you want, because the uh, social media provides all this knowledge, all this information, um, the chance that you are building up a correct picture of a person increases also dramatically. So these are the two points that um, social media bring to the project and that makes it uh, different from, for example, email because email just provides the pure and simple message, which can be sufficient in certain situations, but certainly not in most situations. Right, right. You, you mentioned about the, the feedback that you have, and in some cases, feedback is instantaneous, um, like this one here. My, my next question to you was going to be uh, finding out you know, a few specific project-related examples on how we can use social media tools on our projects, but we got a question here from Twitter, which fits nicely into this. 
And uh, this question is from Jay Godfrey, that is Joelle Godfrey. And she asks you, how can we leverage social media to help with virtual teaming? What are some techniques and some best practices? What have you got, got for her, boss? Um, I think there are two main aspects that um, uh, social media help uh, in projects and in virtual teams especially. Um, first is um, the feedback to increase the communication. And the second one is it um, increases uh, the resilience of the team. I'll explain how and give some examples. Uh, the first one is improve the communication. Like I just said, providing feedback and having an interaction and having a conversation about topics will dramatically improve uh, the information that is available and what people are doing with it. So, um, the sponsor that uh, has a blog and discusses how the business case is going and how the market is developing that re that is relating to the, the goal of the project um, and that has a, a, a big, uh, uh, sorry, and that has uh, a conversation with the people of the uh, project, the project team members is a great example. I especially also like um, uh, people working on uh, in wikis on uh, user uh, of use case uh, descriptions in software development, for example, with their customers. Um, there's also a, a, I've seen a big a, a good example of using a Ning, which is is, is a social network um, within a project team, and and in 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 that team, all the people that. Uh, had some responsibilities and had decisions to make, um, described their um, their problem or their you know their dilemma that they have to make a decision about on a forum, and the project team could discuss that, and then in the end, the uh, the, the leader would uh, make the dis uh, the decision, but more informed and people were more aware of the backgrounds of those decisions. So these are. Uh, examples of how you can uh, use social media to improve the, uh, the the communication by means of feedback. The, the second one is that it improves also the resilience of a uh, of a project team, and with that I mean the um, the the fact that the team can adapt easily more easily to to change. So, for example, um, every team member in the project has a certain role, a predefined role, and if everything goes according to plan, everybody can stick to the role and there's nothing there's nothing to it. However, when there, for example, uh, um, comes a problem that um, was not expected and, and the creativity is required, it's great if people know from the other project team members what they have done in the past and what their additional skills are um, than just the, the one role they are assigned for uh, to the project team. And by putting uh, the emphasis again on the person, so on the profiles they are having and on, uh, um, and on the reputation and on their past uh, uh, experiences, um, that allows uh, the other team members more quickly to uh, well, request assistance on a certain Problem. All right. I can also speak to the question of how you can leverage social media to help with the virtual teaming. Uh, just because of what I have experienced in the past year or so, since I am now working out of my home, out of my home office, I've been using social media to communicate and connect to all my business partners uh, around the world. And it's uh, in the beginning, it's just another tool that you use. And uh, after some time, you begin to exchange also a few, you know, personal messages and how was the weekend. And it begins to turn into a conversation. And it's much easier to do it with social media, like a chat or, or on Twitter much easier than if you just use email because with email there's always the wait you know you send it off and then 10 minutes later you get a response back but with with social media the the feedback is instantaneous and you you're really able to to build a relationship with the people that are at the other end and, and who are talking to you here uh, 
So let's come back to your presentation, boss, and uh, and the EMEA Congress. What was the feedback that you received from your live audience at the Congress? I had some great cr- crowds uh, early on uh, Wednesday morning, nine o'clock. So um, it was a very uh, uh, I had great uh, um, uh, great feedback on that one. Uh, largely uh, because the uh, the audience consisted of project managers that were uh, heavily involved in uh, social media so that makes the the discussions very intense and 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 very um, uh, opinionated which is great and it's and and what i really liked about this uh, um about this presentation about the audience of the presentation was that there were live twittering so for example at pmi agile uh tweeted live uh, um uh, my presentation, which gives it uh, an ex- ex- well an, an additional um, layer, if you want, and it makes it very interesting. For example, um, if I uh, provided some samples, they already looked it up online and were well telling me, you know, like, no, 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 it's not completely right. It's slightly different, and that makes it uh, well more challenging, if you want. Sort of like me earlier on when I looked up what uh, Wikipedia had to say about uh, social media? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I, I've, I've now gone to PMI Agile on Twitter and I can see how uh, he or she Twittered about you. It's it's still visible right there. For instance, it says that uh, Boss is on PMI's new media council. Boss is recommending the social media book Groundswell. Uh, boss is now referencing the tribes group on LinkedIn, etc. So the if you follow uh, at PMI Agile, you pretty much you pretty much had a live link directly into Boss's presentation there at the Congress. Not bad, not bad. How how was that for you at at that end of the of the conversation when people suddenly you know start tweeting about you and and correct you possibly even must be tough. No, it was fun. <laughs> it was a, it was no it, it was it was fun because you know the 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 uh, there were very pleasant people and uh, there uh, so it was a, a great conversation so then it it's, but I can imagine that if if for example if this is the future uh, I'm I'm glad I have a, a, um, you know a very mild topic and not a, a topic where uh, people are uh, well um, mudslinging uh, to each other wow yeah I could imagine that could be a tough one. Here's my last question for you, boss. Many companies have specific IT security policies in place. For instance, a company I used to work for, instant messaging was prohibited and many websites were blocked. So let's say a listener, one of the project managers listening to this would like to begin using social media on her, his projects because begins to realize what a great tool is and what wonderful impact this can have on team building what kind of tools could you suggest that they use which yeah should work in most environments um yeah it's very difficult to say uh, uh, to give examples that uh, or uh, advice about stuff that works in all the environments because you know uh, uh, behind the firewall and before the firewall i would say uh, if you are starting out just keep it simple and and use the um uh, use lightweight open source uh, uh, stuff um use, use a wiki that's great to uh, um, collaborate on certain documents, and it's an easy sell to uh, uh, to the project team members. It's very easy to explain why and how they should use it. Use a blog, um, f- as, and and you start yourself. You know, uh, uh, explain uh, the decisions you have to make and and the points you are addressing, and the, the discussions you are having with uh, the en- people in the environment. Um, because it's essential that you show by example. You have to lead by example. Only a very small portion of the uh, of the world population um, creates content, knows how to do it, or uh, has no fear to do it, or has the urge to do it. So uh, you really have to show people uh, how it's done and and be uh, be the well. What is it? How do you call that one? Uh, uh, be the change you wish to see. Uh, you have to uh, uh, really be uh, in there yourself. And last one, I would suggest something like a, uh, a forum or some kind of uh, a discussion board, which would make it also very, uh, very great to have uh, well people uh, uh, discussing the topics because that is the main issue. Get people discussing topics. 
and 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 take it from there. Excellent. Thank you, Bas. Appreciate your time today. Appreciate uh, the questions that you answered for me and i also appreciated that you you know played along with all these questions that came in live well so to speak live from twitter here wonderful Cornelius, thanks it was a pleasure and that was our interview with boss de bar that's it for today thank you very much for listening and if you like our podcast why not forward the information about it to your friends your co-workers project management colleagues or anyone else who might enjoy it As always, you can find us on the web at thepmpodcast.com. And if you are a project manager who wants to become a PMP, then the easiest way to do so is with our sister podcast, the Project Management Prepcast, and study for the exam by watching over 38 hours of video training from pmprepcast.com. And if you are already a PMP, then stop by at pmlectures.com. We go beyond just delivering PDUs. We give you exclusive training from the brightest minds in project management today. Please send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. And yes, when you write, please tell me where in the world you are writing from. And finally, we have this. Here are six statements that you might find in a project status report and will tell you what they really mean. The first statement is major technological breakthrough. And it means that it works okay, but it looks very high tech. Customer satisfaction upon delivery is assured means that we are so far behind schedule the customer is happy to get anything delivered the entire concept will have to be abandoned means that the only person in the team who understood the thing quit her job weekly report means that i can get all of you responsible for unseen problems in this project It's in the process means that it is so wrapped up in our internal red tape that the situation is about hopeless. And finally, I will look into it means forget it. I have enough problems for now. Until next time.